Hey everyone, it's Apache here and welcome back to another episode of Vintage Story here on the RF Yuri server. Thank you very much for joining me today and continuing to show your support for the series. If you do enjoy this episode, please leave a like and a comment and if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe as well. So last episode we went out and we had a look around Pirate Cove and Mr. Green's area and Pendle and it looks incredible. I love that place and we're definitely going to go back there. I've been speaking to Ashantin and at some point we're going to go on a guided tour around Pendle's land uh, with Ashantin. Uh, it just depends on when the both of us can get online at the same time and we can organise that and set it all up. Anyway, I have been really influenced by what we've seen um, to actually do some chiselling work. And I've been commissioned, well, roped in, I'd say. Commissioned is a nice way of saying roped in. <laughs> yeah, so I've been commissioned to do a little bit of chiselling work for uh, the museum. Now, we haven't been to the museum yet. I don't know where it is. Well, I, I kind of know where it is, but I haven't been there yet. Um, and we've been asked to make a table and set of chairs um, for to go into the museum. And so that's what we're going to do today. I've changed this place around a bit, by the way, if you can't see. I've added in some birch planks up here. I've extended this out to be 12 chests instead of nine, um, so that it all reached up to the ceiling. I've changed all of this over here into the crates rather than the chests. And up here, I don't exactly know what we're going to use it for totally. But for now, I'm going to use this as my chiselling workshop. So, we are going to need a few things to get this organised and sorted out. First thing we're going to need is some tool racks. We'll go one, two, three, four, I think. That'll be fine. Don't need too many. We're not going to have all the chisels in the world up here. Um, but I think I'll have one at the top just to stop you doesn't actually stop you. I thought that might actually stop you from jumping up here, but it doesn't. So we're going to have two there, and we'll have two there. There we go. Next thing we're going to need is, well, we'll need a chest, or for you. We're going to need some bauxite sand. Now, I like to use bauxite sand as a base to put my chiselled stuff on, to be able to lift it up off the ground. Um, it's really nice stuff to work with because it's a bright orange, um, so it works like, like a chroma key, um, a background colour which you're not going to use within um, what you're actually using, um, what you're actually chiselling, but it gives it a nice background to work with. Uh, the other thing we're going to need is some dirt. Now, dirt is over here. And we'll use some just regular low quality dirt, stuff we're not going to stick into, back, into the ground. Come back over here and we'll set up a couple of chests just willy nilly over here. Just to get them down. And we'll throw everything in to here. Now I've got 32 oak planks here. And I'm also going to need some shale. Now if you haven't guessed, this is why I love having a, uh, a workshop like this. I have all my stuff laid out in. So I know exactly how much stuff I've got. Um, now we're going to need shale... Um, polished shale rock is what we're going to need. And we're also going to want, of course, a chisel or two. Probably need two by the end of this, if not more. And so we'll chisel those down into polished blocks. And we'll take those back up to here. And the last thing we're going to need to get started is one of these extended workbenches as well. Um, so we'll place that down just there. Get rid of the rest of that. And we will grab our shale rock and polished shale.
scale oak. Now I'm going to get one of them. Um, no, how many do I want actually? No, I will want one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to need eight in total um, of the standard one. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And put all of these down. Now these need to be chiseled. And then we need to pick them up. Do I take something out of that? No, okay, that's fine. So now we can pick these up. And we can turn these into the multi-material chiseled blocks. So we've got eight of these multi-material chisel blocks. So now we're going to need some bauxite sand so we can lift these up off the ground. We're going to want two here. I'll get another one going over here. We'll get another one going over here, which will need to be too wide. Um, these ones will go like that. This one, we'll put two on top of each other. And then over here, the other four. Now, these two are going to become a table. This is going to become a chair. And then this is going to become another chair. Exactly the same as this one. But in the centre of these two blocks, rather than just as one. And you'll see exactly why later on. Now the style of table that we're going to make, and the style of the dining set that we're going to make, it's called Jarly Tableware. Um, but I'll put some designs up on screen of this now. And I love this stuff. It is incredible furniture. Very, very, very sturdy. Really beautiful designs. As you can see, there's lots of different designs um, with the, the backs with black uh, metalwork going down the back. Um, and there's these really uh, intricate clamps on the side, or almost like hinges on the side of the table, which we're going to try and replicate now. So the way we're going to start this table off, we're actually going to take out the entire of the bottom of all of this, and we're only going to work with the top four voxel layers. So we'll just take all of this out like this. Now hopefully I won't need to edit or speed this up too much, because I've made these tables a few times in the past, and they've always come out really quite well. Um, the biggest difficulty is going to be shaving out the inside of it because I don't like to just leave it this thick. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So if we come down now to a one by one, what we want to do is take out the two center bits in all of this. Just like that. And then all the way along here as well. When I'm working at these distances, I quite like to put a block of dirt on the end, which means we're not going to hit into this maple wood um, or anything else around the area if we go too far, uh, which might potentially, if we're right clicking on stuff, might potentially uh, turn whatever material is behind it into chiseled material, which is exactly what we don't want. But this uh, low fertility soil, I'm right clicking on it now and you cannot convert it into chiseled material. And so we'll take this down. I could do with a shovel actually, really. We'll place one there. And now we'll get rid of this bit as well. So now that's done, we've got a nice little border around the edge here. And we can come in with the shale rock polished and we can cut out this bit here. I want it to be, I believe, to about there. So we'll have five on either side. That's one, two, three, four. 
on the investment pit. And so that gives it that really distinct black uh, hinge type clamp on, on the side of it, which holds the whole table together. So now we can actually take out the sand from underneath it. And here is the long, slow and laborious part of it, which is going to take out most of this uh, um, chisel. Is we want to come in and we want to take out everything here, underneath here, um, down to this level here. So this is a lot of chiseling to be able to get all of this down. Um, so I think I'm going to do that now off camera so that you don't have to suffer through me doing all of this by hand. And I do this because I like to have a really, really thin tabletop um, so that I can add uh, the, um, the style and decoration for the whole table so that when whatever angle you see it, including from the bottom, um, it actually looks like it should do, rather than just being big and clumpy on the bottom and then very, very stylized on the top. And so there we go, there is the table top itself. And then under here, we just need to put the leg in. And so the leg is actually gonna be three wide. So we'll just mark out where it's gonna be. And it'll be just here and like that. And if we bring that down by one here, it's exactly where it's gonna be. Now this is why it's nice to um, have it on uh, one higher up because it means you can actually get underneath it if this was right down on the ground it would be almost impossible to put this leg back in now and it's far easier to put the leg in at the end rather than trying to build around it so we're going to sit down here as well and we're going to take it to a two by two mode and then we can add in all the way down that's the furthest it will go if we put a block in just <laughs> Not there, um, just here. And so it'll actually sit on the ground now. And so now we just need to fill in some of these little bits. Just there. And we need to bring this out by one voxel on each side of the table leg. Now most of the Jolly tables have some really intricate designs to the legs here, but it, with the voxel size on this, it's very difficult to get it just how we want it. If we had a slightly smaller chisel, um, as you can see this, uh, each pixel that you can see um, is one quarter of a voxel. Um, so if we had 32 by 32 uh, chiseling, then we could change each one of these individual pixels out and so we could give some much finer intricate detail to it however with the chiseling tools that we have at the moment we can't do that um, and if we try to say take out a center bit here just to add a bit of decoration and fascination onto that it looks far too weedly and spindly in the center so we're going to leave it like this and we're just going to let the, the natural grain of the oak here form its own little intricate patterns. 
And believe it or not, that is the table actually finished. So we can actually take this down now, because that's all we're going to need to be able to make the whole dining table. Because if we come into here now, we can have both of these in there. Now these are just the raw uh, shale um, rocks and just the raw oak planks. They're not chiseled at all. If we add a chisel in here, so I'll have one chisel for here and one chisel for actually working. And we add in this. Then we can right click on here and it will actually copy um, that design. And so for the table legs, we're actually going to need four of them. So if we do this three times, we go one. There's the third leg. And there is the fourth. So bring these ones out. And then with this one, uh, we're going to need an, just another one of these. And that will be fine. And there we go. So now we have four table legs. So we go one, two, three, and four. And we have a center bit. We go one and two. And then we'll grab our chisel. Put it into rotate mode. We'll bring that one round to there. That one round to there. That one round to there. And that one round to there. And that should be everything finished. And this table is ready to go. So it was this point that I realised that my mute button on my stream deck is very, very close to my stop recording button. <laughs> you can imagine what happened. So I'm going to show you the, the chairs that we've just done. <laughs> we, were, we were supposed to have done together. Um, I've been talking to you for the last 20 minutes or so. <laughs> there it is. Um, so yeah, these are pretty simple to make. So I'll, I'll walk you through the process of them. Um, but kind of missed just the design features of it so we get to this stage like that we get there from just two regular pieces of oak um we grab some oak from in in here And place these down like that. Now the basic premise of making these is to take off the top, the front face of the top of it, and then take off another four here to drop the, the height of the seat down, and then you take off the, the back of it. And you need to take it off down to two voxels thick. So you take it up to down to four. We can even take these bits out under here as well. Now, what you can actually do is make a really nice big chunky chair, which is kind of what I'm going to do now to show you. So we're just going to leave it at four, uh, four voxels wide. And we're going to take the back out of the chair just here as well and then this is where I would usually use the um, the shale but we don't have that in this because it's not multi-block so what we're going to do is we're going to come down to a two wide uh, no we'll come down to a one wide and we'll make these just a little bit thicker than we normally would and then you just come down and detail the back however you want really I mean there's no real um, way to mess this up um jolly furniture is all about being big and bold and brash and you know not trying to make it look delicate in any kind of way at all um the filigree work is sometimes quite delicate but the wood itself is big and heavy um and stocky wood and so you can see with the wide wood here it starts looking a bit more like doll's house furniture 
uh, rather than like a dining chair like this. I do quite like this aspect of, of this kind of design as well, that you can make it look good in a lot of different scenarios. Um, and one of the nice things about having it four wide as well, rather than this is three wide, so we haven't really been able to add much of this filigree work inside there. However, with this, you've actually got this whole section here, but you can do exactly the same as we did with the table. So you can take all of this out. And if you look at Charlie chairs, this is actually something which is done as well, where they almost make like a small table and then just put a back on it. Um, it's it's very, very simple to, to pre-style like that. You can do pretty much whatever you want with it. So here, all I've done is just taken down everything which was a four voxel. I've just taken it down to two voxels instead. And then finally, the only bit you need to do is the back of it. Now, on Jolly Chairs, there are many, many, many different ways you can do it. Here, I've just done it like a chain link. Um, so we've got a one by two checkerboard pattern all the way across it. Um, however, some of the other designs, um, you can see in the photos that I put up at the beginning of this episode, um, you can kind of do this kind of thing, and then one in the centre there. Um, so you can just create it as a straight edge up the back of it. And this is a very traditional looking style as well. So now we just bring all of these down, um, so we touch on the bottom. Um, and this is more reminiscent to the style that we actually have at home. That's what I've based all of these tables and chairs off, is my own dining furniture that we have at home. We'd spent a long time looking for this because we had some coffee tables originally, uh, the Jolly style coffee tables, and we really liked them. And so we wanted to try and get some um, dining, dining set of it as well, a proper dining table and six chairs. Um, and it took us ages to try and find it. And we actually found it was cheaper and more readily accessible just to get these chairs custom made. So we had six chairs custom made uh, and it was far, far cheaper than actually buying them in the shops. Um, so that is what you can do with, with the chairs here. The only thing that's different between this one we've just done now and this one was here, is this one is just very, very slightly uh, shorter because I've shaved it off by two voxels on either side and at the front. And that just means that it sits a bit more nicely around a table when you're displaying it like this. So you can see there's a little bit of a gap between each chair and between the table itself. Now the difference between uh, these ones here uh, on the sides of the table and the ones at the head of the table is that these are made out of four different pieces um, of chiselled wood. However, the effect of it is exactly the same and the way you make it is exactly the same. You just shave an eight voxel bit um, off each side of the, uh, the two by two that you make. So if we place some wire, you take off this side here, and you take off this side here, and you're left with what eventually looks just like this. And so you can work with it from there. And it's really nice and simple to work with. So there we have it. A chiseled dining set in a Jali Shisham style. We have dining table and eight chairs. And then here we have an example of another type of chair that you could make. And then, of course, you can swap out these back bars for any material you like. I would try to use as dark a black as you can. Um, I've used like a charcoal grey here with the, uh, the shale. However, you could use basalt as well if you wanted a really, really deep, dark black uh, colour in the back. Um, I would try to stick with a black colour if you can. That's what most of them are. Or a, another type of wood. Maybe a acacia wood would actually quite look quite good in here as well.
So this has spurred me on to do a lot more chisel work in this game. I really enjoy the chiseling aspect of Vintage Story. It's what sets it apart from a lot of the other voxel based games. I know it's based on something like chisel and bits. Um, however, the community really has embraced it and kind of made it something absolutely incredible in this game. Where I think it was missed a bit in Minecraft with, uh, with chisel and bits. I don't think it was really used to its fullest. Whereas here, because it's in the base game, everyone knows it and it's just used everywhere um, to great, great effect. Just walking around the server and seeing some of the stuff people have made, as we will see on our uh, future tours around the server, as we saw last episode as well. Um, just incredible, incredible stuff. And I want to be a part of that. What I'm not going to go do, however, what I'm not going to do is uh, do some more tutorials like this. I think I don't. I don't think I need to teach you how to do this. Really, uh, I wanted to show you this style and, and like my style of, of of chisel work, but I don't think it's something I need to go on and on and on about. Um, so I, I want to have a play around off camera uh, and uh, develop some of my own furniture some of my own designs and uh yeah I'll, I'll bring you back in and show you what's what's happening with it <laughs> if there's anything that i do feel which is like really good to teach then i will do a tutorial on that but other than that just enjoy what i what i create so thank you very much for joining me today i think next episode we are going to be doing some village expansion i think we're going to get some new buildings up and running within the village here. Not too sure what yet, or what we're, at least what we're going to be used for. I know where they're going to be, but I don't know what they're going to be used for. But that is something we will discuss next time. Thank you very much for joining me today. If you did enjoy this episode, please leave a like, comment and subscribe on the video and to the channel. And I will see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me by subscribing to the channel and liking and commenting on the videos. Thanks. See you next time.